Every year, eight of the world's greatest nine ball players are invited to participate in one of the sport's most prestigious events. It's where a world-class venue plays host to world-class pressure. It's where the winner is crowned the champion of champions. It's the 16th annual International Challenge of Champions. Semi-final action is next. The 2006 SML Nine Ball Open Champion and nine time player of the year, Johnny Archer! <laughs> the 2005 Texas Hold'em Billiards Champion, 2005 Reno Open Nine Ball Champion, Marlon Manalo! Welcome to the fantastic Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut, and the semifinals of the 16th annual International Challenge of Champions, the longest running TV event in billiards history. Let us take a look at our Mohegan Sun road to the finals. As you see, Johnny Archer moved on by beating the 2005 European Nine Ball Champion, Alex Laley, in a sudden death tiebreaker. Marlon Manalo, also in sudden death, took out the great 2005 Euro Tour champion Niels Feyen. Both the Dutchmen are now gone. The winner of this semifinal will meet the winner of the Torsten Holman Fang Pang Chow semifinal match. One of these four will be your champion of champions. Let's look at our Mohegan Sun tournament format. Two sets. Each a race to five. If we are tied, there will be a one-rack sudden death tiebreaker. We've seen that already play a part this week. We'll be alternating breaks. 30-second shot clock with one timeout per rack. You must call the nine ball. It will be foul on all balls. <laughs> Always a ton of excitement inside the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun. The International Challenge of Champions. Thrilled to have you with us as always. And there you see the gentleman from Manila in the Philippines, Marlon Manalo, and what a fantastic addition to international pool he has been. Time for our Olhausen player profiles. The 2005 Texas Hold'em Billiards Open Champion, 2005 Reno Open Champion. And this is a man that clearly has a taste for big time money. No question about it. And there's a face we've seen for how long. Johnny Archer from Marietta, Georgia, the Scorpion, seven time player of the year, player of the decade in the 90s, former World US Open, BCA Open champion. There is not much that this gentleman hasn't done in the world of pool. We will talk about one thing that he hasn't accomplished yet as time goes on. But first up, breaking in this first set, having won the lag for the opening break, Marlon Manalo and Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins sitting here, and there is no place I'd rather be watching pool right now, Alan. <laughs> and you just seen a fabulous break. He pocketed the one ball on the break, and he also pocketed another ball on the break. He pocketed the sixth ball. He has a nice open shot. Here's the two ball, and here's the cue ball. Has an open shot on the two ball, and a nice layout. He sure has been playing great, Mitch. I've been watching him play in his other matches, and he's unbelievable right now. He's on fire. And gaining in confidence with every tournament he plays in. And how important, as we always talk about, to get off early, Alan, get a good feel for the table and establish oh. yourself. Well, he hit that perfect. He has the perfect angle. To come up for the four ball in the same pocket. To bring the cue ball toward the center of the table here. One of the really, really class acts out here, Marlon Manalo from Manila in the Philippines. Now it's a little tricky here. You notice where the, uh, the four ball straight in, that's not the problem. The five ball to the seven, he wants an angle on the five ball. To bring the cue ball down to the bottom, your side rail there, you'll see he'll follow the cue ball. Wants the cue ball almost on the bottom rail. Now this this gives him the perfect angle to go down table for the seven. And what I mean by this, he'll pocket the five in here and come down here and go in this area here for the seven. And you couldn't ask for a better opening rack right now than the one Marlon Manalo is putting on Johnny Archer. Good speed control. And as he gets ready for the seven, you want to mention this great official playing equipment. You see the waterfall table by Olhausen. Simonis 860 cloth on that great table. The Mueller rack in use. 
all of them official products of the International Challenge of Champions. Super Aramith Pro Ball is also the official ball set. <laughs> Marlon Manalo is using them well right now, Alan. One ball left for an early lead. Well, I, I liked how he got out here, Mitch. Real solid. And from the Simonis pocket cam, Marlon Manalo does what he's asked to do. A break and run in the opening rack and a one rack lead over Johnny Archer. Welcome everybody inside the Wolf Den, Mitch Lawrence, alongside the 1993 champion of champions, Alan Hopkins. Alan, you've been here before, you know what it means. We've seen a great first rack by Marlon Manalo, talked about how fantastic it is to see him. Johnny Archer, the player of the decade, I mentioned there's one thing he hasn't done amidst all the tournaments he's won. What is that? And that's win the Challenge of Champions, exactly International right. Challenge of Champions. A lot of great players have won this event, but Johnny Archer, Mike Siegel, uh, Earl Strickland have not won this event. This is a super tough event to win. And if Manalo keeps going like that, he's going to be unbeatable. <laughs> Isn't that incredible to watch? Fantastic early playing. Sends a message to Johnny Archer right away. And you have to do it in the challenge of champions. The pressure is on all the time. At the end of this road, $50,000 winner take all. Three of the final four players. Nice to see you. Have a nice trip home. And one of them, $50,000 richer. We'll see if Johnny can answer that opening break by Marlon and Manalo as he broke and ran out, leading one nothing. He does answer, Mitch. He made a great break here. And as you'll see in a minute here, he, he pockets the one ball on the side, and there the four ball gets kicked in the other corner, and the cue ball comes laying in the middle. There's the four falling in the pocket. And now the cue ball is in the center of the table, and Johnny be shooting the two ball and coming out toward the center of the table for the three. Now he has, you can see he has a little problem there. He has to worry about the seven and eight right here. Okay, he's going to address that later. Take a quick look around. Both of these players fully capable of going all the way here. This is one of the more incredible fields at the Challenge of Champions that we've seen over the years. Well, I think you're going to see a lot of breaking and running out, Mitch. And now here you see the five ball in the corner and here's the six ball. Okay, his position on the six is what he's concerned about because he wants to basically get it so he has an angle to come off the bottom rail and over on the side so he doesn't have to break open the seven and eight. Gotta make sure about not touching any other balls. That would be a foul. And he takes his one time out. Bringing the cue ball over toward the center, Mitch. I don't think he's going to take bigger. Uh oh, he caught the nine. Look out! Caught the nine ball. I don't. I don't believe he wanted to touch the nine ball there. He may have gotten lucky here. Now, Mitch, let me show you something here. See the angle he has on the six ball in the corner. Cue ball and come off here and hit this eight out of the way, maybe. And that might be perfect. Along the way, you're going to need a couple of rolls here and there. Might be one of them for Johnny. Oh, it laid perfect, and he noticed it. he hit it perfect. Got a little bit of an angle on the seven, but he's okay. Johnny, born in Waycross, Georgia, lives in Marietta, Georgia boy. Very proud of it. There is no shot that this man does not have. And I, I really think this is one of the more intriguing matchups we've had, Alan, because both of these guys can really, really play. Well, they're batting a thousand right now. Yep. They're breaking and running out, and that's that's not easy to continue to keep doing. So obviously the break will be a big part of who's going to move into the finals here in Uncasville. Johnny Archer answering Marlon Manalo, and tying this first set up. We want to thank two of the great official products of the Challenger Champions, the Mueller Rack and Super Aramith Pro Balls. And you see them from above there. Here at the Wolf Den at Mohegan Sun as we move into rack six of the first set. Johnny Archer leading 3-2 now. And wow, did we have some surprises in the last rack, Alan. Two rail kick, he makes the one, but he caroms off the three and scratches in the side. And that's a bad break for Johnny. And then Manalo comes up and misses the eight. 
and sets up a run up, but Johnny needs a tough shot and makes the nine. Almost scratches in the side pocket, Mitch. You see that? <laughs> it's starting. We're in the middle of the first set. There's another set after this one, but you can feel the pressure mounting on both players. It's not that they haven't played in big time events. Both of them have mm. and have won. But there is something about this international challenge of champions. <laughs> we start seeing this kind of stuff as we go along, and there's going to be more to come. The winner of this match meets the winner of the Torsten Holman Fang Pang Chow match. Chow, the defending and three time winner of the Challenger of Champions. No one else in its 16 year history has done that. And Johnny has never won it. He would love a chance. They let the cue ball get away a little bit and has not pocketed a ball. And this is big because there's there's no shot on the one, even though the one's in the middle table. Manalo has the two and the seven in front of the cue ball, and he knows that. <laughs> <laughs> he was sure he made something. Well, I think he was hoping he made something, yeah. to tell you the truth. That's right. He's going to be playing a jump shot. Here here it all is, right here, the two, the seven, and the cue push ball. Out. And here's push. the one. Well, Manalo's okay. not going to push out. Uh, not, not use the jump stick. He's going to push out. And I think Johnny's going to get right up from his seat real quick. <laughs> Straight in. You like this shot? <laughs> Well, even though he pushed out where the one is straight in, the two and the seven, Manalo's going to have to draw the cue ball back. Now, here's the one ball, and here's the cue ball. Now, making the one is pretty much, you know, they figured to make the one, but the two ball is positioned for the two. That's why Johnny may give it up. I don't like that, that one, baby. Right. Now he has to make the one in play ball. position, and that makes it a lot tougher. You're going to see Manalo elevate his cue and try to draw the cue ball back a little bit or play a safety. I don't know if Johnny thought about that. Okay, he's going to follow it in and draw the ball back about 10 inches. Got the cue ball back. Actually too far back, but he got, got lucky oh. with it. Got oh. lucky. <laughs> Here it is. The cue ball is laying in the pocket. We've seen it a couple times so far in this match. Just one more roll. Here it is, and look at the one ball right here by the seven, and the nine looks like it's in the way. Johnny is looking at a cross side bank. In other words, hitting the one ball into this rail and coming back over here into this side. Could play safe too if he puts the one on the other side of the table and brings a cue ball back down table behind the nine and three. Well, that cue ball is going to travel. There it was. He, be <laughs> he became offensive, and of course he missed it and left the one straight in. So yeah, Johnny got a bad break. Manalo missed and left him safe. But it's not over yet, Mitch, because position on the two ball is not easy because the four ball got in the way. And as you can see right here, this ball here is going to become in the way of position for the two. So Manalo's got to be careful not to get behind that. Matter of fact, if he comes down and hits it, he'll be okay. Yeah, there's where he wants to come down, right there with the cue ball, in between the four. I think it's nice that he's showing everybody where he <laughs> wants to put that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's absolutely, there you go. Watch out. absolutely perfect. Perfect. That was a nice shot. That was an excellent shot, actually. I noticed the cue ball is up against the four, but he'll elevate his hand. He doesn't have to do anything with the cue ball, basically, just make the two. So he'll roll this in nice and easy. done that's the touch <laughs> we're talking about there <laughs> yeah. if your small muscles are twitching at all that doesn't happen <laughs> that shot well here's the three so all you gotta do is roll in for that here's the cue ball now the four ball position for the four is a little tricky probably gonna come up over by the eight ball following the ball and there he comes right up by the eight absolutely perfect He'll be drawing the cue ball back somewhere in this area here, I believe, for the five. He's going to look at it now. He wants an angle on the five. He can get an angle, Mitch, because the six ball is down table. Nine ball is a game of angles. Helps you to move the cue ball around. 
You know, it's a good point, Alan. Most amateur players want nothing but a straight-in shot because they think it's just easy and they can make it, but it doesn't allow you to get the cue ball in position for the next shot. Right. It's much easier to move the cue ball around with angles. You're going to see the cue ball do a little fancy hey, stuff here with two, rail <laughs> two rails. He's got to go two rails with the cue ball and come back down table for the six. I don't think he'll go one rail because the nine and the seven might be in the way. He's going to be very careful not to touch any balls on the table. One, two, and perfect. Notice the speed. Absolutely perfect. You got a good look at the steadiness of Manalo's head while he's shooting and following through. Such a tendency to jump up and move on it, but he really, really stayed with that one a long time. It's just like golf, Mitch. You gotta keep your body still. This has been a very, very big rack, an important rack for Marlon Manalo after missing the eight ball, a seemingly routine run out in the last rack. This will allow him to tie it up with Johnny Archer as we I move toward the conclusion of the first set. Both players now all square after six racks. Marlon Manalo and Johnny Archer going at it in Uncasville. Our pool tip of the day is brought to you by Mohegan Sun, featuring super Aramith Pro Balls, the Belgian Billiard Balls, and our own Alan Hopkins. I would like to demonstrate the legal way to shoot two different types of shots. Here is a shot with the cue ball and the five ball. They're frozen, actually touching each other. And I need to play position for the nine ball down table. To make a legal shot, I can actually push right through the five ball with right hand spin and go down table for the nine ball. This is very simple position. Now on the next shot, the cue ball and the object ball will not be frozen. There will be a space between them. What actually happens, because there's a space between the balls, it's an illegal shot to shoot through the balls. So what I must do is go to the other rail with left hand spin and bring the cue ball down the table on the other side. And these are two legal shots. If you shoot them any other way, it would be a foul. And who enjoys not only the challenge of champions, but life. This is somebody we all really enjoy being around, Hank Hayes. Uncasville, Connecticut, and those two great words, Mohegan Sun, and how much we love coming here. If you have not been to Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, you owe yourselves a trip. An absolutely beautiful, beautiful spot in America. And Johnny Archer and Marlon Manalo going after a spot in the finals of the 16th Annual International Challenge of Champions. Marlon leading 4-3 in a race to five. First set, we will play a second set. Johnny needs to get one here. Ball on the break. He has, Mitch. He's made a ball on the break, and maybe he'll get a shot on the one. I'm not sure. But I'll tell you what, he made the three ball on the break, and as we'll see, his break, he hits the one solid. And the ball try. There's the ball. Comes right in the corner pocket. That's a three ball. Nine ball stays dead center. And here is the one, the four, and the eight, all clustered up there. And we're going to see a safety. I don't believe he has a shot. Trying to leave the cue ball safe from the one, and that was perfect. Nicely done. Notice what he did there, Mitch. He hit the one right into the four, banked it off the side rail, kept the cue ball by the eight ball, so it blocked his shot on the one ball. Nice. And that's what we call, folks, an advanced shot. <laughs> and here is the one and eight and the, cue, and the one ball. I mean, the, one, the cue ball, the eight, and the one ball. And he's going to kick to the bottom rail, probably go two rails here. I'll show you. He's going to spin the cue ball a little bit, come this way into the one. And he may hit a little too hard because he left an easy shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I thought for a minute that there, was, yeah. <laughs> he was going to get lucky there, you know? So now Johnny comes to the table finally with a, with a decent open shot on the one ball, and the balls are open nicely. I tell you, Mitch, he needs to, you know, get a little run out here and get his little bit of confidence that he's going to get some breaks, you know, because it always seems like he's getting bad breaks. He didn't overcut that, did he? No, okay. <laughs> nope. When you talk about good pocket speed, you've got to look at it right there. Just enough to get it. Leave himself good position on the two. Well, if you notice, Johnny's not Johnny's not too short. He's pretty tall. He can reach a lot of shots that a lot of people have to use a bridge for. As of, like this shot right here. Notice the cue ball's past the side pocket. He can just reach out for it. Perfect. Bringing the cue ball back for the four in the same pocket. And he wanted an angle on that. I don't know if he got it, though. And I don't think he did. 
And there it is. And here, here's the four. And he wanted an angle. There's the cue ball. Because here's the five. He wanted an angle to come down one, two rails for the five in the side. So if he doesn't have that angle, he'll just roll it in and probably bank the five. And when your opponent is on the hill, anything that's a little more difficult becomes magnified. Well, you know, that five's off the rail about eight inches. He, he may, may have a shot there. Yeah, he may be able to cut time this out, in. Right? Yeah, but he's going to take his time. The time you're cutting a ball like this into the side pocket, anything can happen. Malalo's thinking to himself, Mitch, well, if I can get this wreck, I'll win the first <laughs> set. He's on the hill. <laughs> Johnny needs to get, win this game to get on the hill with him. Johnny's banking it, I think, Mitch. Oh, no, he cut it in. And not oh. only that, but the worst possible result oh. for Johnny Archer right there. You know, I'll tell you what, I, I almost would like Tim Banking. I, I, you know, because it has a chance to go cross-side and everything. It looked like it was a pretty tough shot. And this game will definitely get yourself talking to yourself. Yeah, there you go. Just catches the point. There the cue ball gets away from him and scratches in the corner pocket. So Marlon will have ball in hand with five balls on the table to win the first set, Mitch. Looks like whatever Marlon was thinking sitting in that chair may come to pass. Watch out. Well, look at this. Out. Look at this. Watch you think out. the 50,000 just wow. came into play there. <laughs> you can't speak too quickly here. So much can happen. I'll tell you what. I mean, he just came. He's going to try to cut this in. I don't think he's going to try to cut it in the corner, it looks like. And this is dangerous. <laughs> he's going to let the cue ball go. Now, that there's the seven. really going to go. Yeah, you got a good shot of it there. But notice the nine ball in the center of the table. That stops him from scratching in the corner, it looks like. See the nine right here? That stops him from coming off here and going into this corner, I think. I'll tell you something, though. Johnny Archer just sat up a little straighter in his chair. He might play safe, Mitch. Cut it in. And oh. there. See that nine now ball? If it <laughs> sneaks by the nine, it does. Wow. wow. That was perfect. That <laughs> was so close. You talk about having some nerves right there. A tough cut and Big. coming really close to scratching in the corner. But as Alan said, and it looked like the nine was in the way there. Yeah. Mitch, I'll tell you. Wow, this is big. Big, big, big. Nine ball. Marlon Manalo's eyes getting real big right about now. This for the first set. Not a problem at that point. Took care of the hard stuff earlier. And with three consecutive racks at the end of the first set, Marlon Manalo with the lead. <laughs> you bet a lot of cheering here at the Wolf Den in Mohegan Sun. After the first set, Marlon Manalo up by one. Johnny Archer will have the break in set number two. To look at the beautiful trophy symbolic of our champion of the international challenge of champions johnny archer at the table ready to break and right. you know mitch he's been breaking well sorry to interrupt but he has been breaking well you know it's just a matter of a couple breaks here and there and you know a couple bad rolls he got and then he played you know bad position on the four that last rack and that cost him that last set of days. that's right as we get ready for set two here and watch out that cue ball moving and he's the you bet he wants to hit it <laughs> that got, is not the way to start this second set and as i was just saying Mitch, a couple bad rolls and Ooh. there's another bad roll he got kicked in the corner pocket oh, there yeah. this guy here and there it is the break and now here comes the ball and kicks the cue ball <laughs> toward okay. the corner pocket and, and there it goes and nothing st can stop it it goes right into the corner pocket and that's just a bad roll and johnny knows it and sinking, sinking, sinking further, Johnny Archer. A couple of bad ones, as Alan said, in that first set. And this one, it just seems like it's piling on. But Marlon Manalo will gladly take it, ball in hand, up by a set. And has a really nice layout here. As you can see, the one, two, and three right there. He's going to play the one in the corner, and the two ball go in the same corner as the one. He's going to bring the cue ball up to the center of the table. There it is. Now his concern basically is that, that you know the seven and eight are on the back rail, that should be okay. Uh, he almost fouled the ball there. We play foul on all balls. He's got to be careful not to touch the eight ball. Any part of his clothing touches that ball, it's a foul. And there it is. He's got an angle on the three, coming back for the four. As he gets ready, we want to thank a couple of our terrific official sponsors of the Challenge of Champions: Silver Cup Chalk and Ozone Billiards. Three coming back for the four. 
Absolutely good perfect. Speed. Yep. I think we may see a follow shot here. You may see him hit the cue ball. With, oh no, he's going to draw it back again. Okay. He wants an angle on the six now. It's very important he gets an angle. Notice the angle he's left himself to go down to the bottom rail. He'll put the cue ball right in between the eight and seven. Nice and easy. Absolutely perfect, Mitch. And that is a great example of trust. At this level, with all this on the line, you know where you want to put it. You have got to trust your body to be able to execute, and he did. That was a really good example of it. He's playing fabulous position. I mean, everything's perfect for him. He has an angle here on the eight to bring the cue ball right toward the center of the table. Make sure he doesn't go too far. Nine bud. You hear that accent? Signifying Manila in the Philippines. And Marlon Manalo may have gotten away with one. He knows he had a good opportunity and takes advantage of it. It's the opening rack in set two. What a fantastic week we've had here at Mohegan Sun. I guarantee you there is not a more amazing facility anywhere. Spectacular hotel, the best in fine dining, unique and fabulous shops, all in addition to a 10,000-seat sports and entertainment arena. Mohegan Sun, truly a legendary entertainment experience. Closed captioning for today's show provided by Mohegan Sun. And Johnny Archer, the scorpion, has to keep himself composed right now early in set two, down by one rack in the second set and down by a set to Marlon Manalo trying to get to the finals of the Challenger Champions. And here is what happened in that opening rack of the second set. <laughs> and you see his reaction, Alan. He cannot believe how the rolls are piling up right now. All in favor so far, and it looks like in Marlon Manalo's favor. And here at the table in, se in the second rack of the second set, Marlon Manalo. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Mitch, that, that takes a toll on you. In other words, you keep getting bad rolls, you finally start playing bad. You know, and this is, what's, this is what's going on right now. On the other hand, Manalo's breaking the balls well. He feels very confident. And look at the nine. We got a fast rack right here. We're going to get a one nine combination. This set up perfect for Johnny. Well, I'll tell you, he jumped out of his seat and he's got to be thinking, OK, finally, there's a roll that came my way. Yes, definitely. Now, I can't tell if the one's touching that rail, but if it's frozen the rail, it's a whole different shot. But if it's not frozen, it's a pretty easy shot. What he's going Timeout. to do is he's going to carry him off the one ball here and let the cue ball go into the nine and make the nine ball in the side pocket. And there it is. And it looks like it's off the rail a little bit. Johnny will not hit this real hard. I'll really. tell you what, that was a veteran move, too. Call and timeout. Some extra time to make sure. This is absolutely critical, Alan. Well, yeah, you may hit, I mean, that looks pretty close to the point. Though. He's, he's got to hit it not too hard. It'll, it'll bounce right out. Yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> it looked like it tried to get out of there. We talked earlier about knowledge of the game. You had to have it there, and Johnny doing what he needed to do. Big, big turnaround in that second rack. Johnny Archer ties it up. A good close-up look at the official ball set of the Challenge of Champions, Super Aramis Pro Balls. And of course, that's where we are. Mohegan Sun in Uncasville, Connecticut. Fantastic matchup between two great players, champions both as they have to be at the International Challenge of Champions. Marlon Manalo from the Philippines, Johnny Archer from the United States. One of them will move into the finals, meet the winner of the Torsten Holman Fang Pang Chow semifinal match. And Marlon Manalo trailing by one rack against Johnny Archer with the break in rack four. Wow, he hit them solid too, and he's come up dry. Big break for Johnny because he has a nice opening shot on the one ball. That's two racks in a row for Marlon Manalo that he's broken and not made any balls, Alan. That's big because Johnny has the opportunity now to go ahead by two games and embrace the five. And those the one balls in the center of the table and the two balls right on the side rail. So if he makes the one, he basically just stop right there for the two. Perfect. Now Johnny's <laughs> Mitch has got to take advantage of this because a couple times now he's had an, he's had an opportunity to run out and, and didn't get there, so he has to make sure he gets out this rack, and I think you'll see him do that. You'll see him take his time and. 
two rails here with the cue ball. One, two. Get over there and do not get straight in. <laughs> you saw Johnny with a little bit of body English there trying to get it off the rail as much as he could. Well, I'll tell you what. If the four doesn't go in the corner here, but it does, it, got, it does go past the nine. You're, you see, here's the four and nine, and he's playing. Here's the three. I'm going to bring the cue ball back right about here for the four ball in this pocket. Unless he can bounce it out to the center of the table, but I don't think he'll take a big chance here. Just bring it back. Make sure you make the three ball. Okay, he cinched the three ball there, and he, it's a nice angle on the four. So Johnny will play the four ball and bring the cue ball back out toward the center of the table. Won't play the combination. You don't want to play a combination if you don't have to. If he can make the four, he'll play the four. Perfect. Good work there. And I mentioned earlier that Marlon didn't make a ball in the second rack either. And how big, Allen, was that turnaround? Nothing on the break and the 1-9 combination for Johnny. And all of a sudden, like you said, he has got such life right now in this set. Well, that'll help him to play a little better too, Mitch, I'll tell you. Because when, when you start getting bad rolls, it seems Chuck. like you can't make any balls either. And he's okay here. He has an angle on the six. And that's exactly what he wanted was an angle. Now, he'll bring the cue ball down table where he's standing right now for the seven ball. He'll make sure he does not scratch in the corner or the side. A little bit of right hand spin, not much. Time out, time out, time out. Johnny knows this is a crucial part of the set right here. Very crucial. As always, nothing Marlon can do about it. <laughs> Sit and wait. <laughs> Hold up. Well, I'll tell you what, Mitch, he's, he's left himself, you know, a pretty good cut shot. So you're going to see the cue ball travel a little bit here. He'll stretch. He has to stretch for this also. Notice the leg on the table. That's for balance. So he has the balance so he can pocket this ball. Perfect. Perfect speed. That's a shot of a champion <laughs> right there. Stretched out fully, tough cut, beautiful position. That should tell you where Johnny Archer is right now in rack four of the second set. He's been around long enough to know Allen. Right now, if he does what he's supposed to do, he's got a good chance of getting to one rack, sudden death tiebreaker to move into the finals. And that's all he could ask for after that first set. And we love that too. Oh, no, man. <laughs> and the crowds love it. I know that. <laughs> we have seen it so often at the Challenge of Champions. And no reason to think any different right now. Johnny Archer, Marlon Manalo, second set here in Uncasville. Here at the Wolf Den in Uncasville, Connecticut, Mohegan Sun. The venue, as always, fantastic place to contest the International Challenge of Champions. And Marlon Manalo of the Philippines at the end of his second set rope, Alan. Needs to make, get this and a few more racks to stay alive. Otherwise, we're going to sudden death. Well, th that's the unique thing about the format of this event. Now, he's made a ball on the break here. And I'll get back to that in a second. He made the three ball on the break, and the cue ball is protected. Now, having a shot on the one ball, here's the one ball, and here's the cue ball. If he can make that in the corner pocket, he's okay because the two ball is by here, by the corner pocket. So just making the one ball is his concern right now. And it looks like the six ball may be in the way. And if he gets down to shoot, it's not in the way. So let's we'll see what he does. He also has a safety. He can hit the one ball very thin and bring the cue ball back down table. And that looks like that's what he's going to do, it looks like. And there it is. Cue ball coming down table. Slow up a little bit. Don't scratch. Slow up. Blow up. <laughs> Boy, tell you. He stayed there yeah. a long time watching it. Didn't <laughs> you? you talk about pocket speed. But as I was saying, and I, here's the key. He's going to have to come behind here and kick at this one probably, unless he can hit it directly. I think he's going to kick at it and try to make it. See how hard he hits it. Playing safety. He could hit it directly. And I he got away with it. <laughs> I 
put the cue ball right behind the eight, and here's the one. So a little fortunate there for Johnny Archer. Manalo kicked two rails at the one ball, going to the bottom rail, kicking this way, one, two, kicking the one ball. He could get lucky here. The cue ball could roll behind the eight. Or he could kick one rail at it and try to make it. it looks like that's what he's trying to do. He tried to make that. Unfortunately, he didn't, and now Johnny has a great opportunity, Mitch, if I'm correct, to win this set. Is he on the hill, Johnny? He is. Okay. Four racks in a row after being down by one rack early in this set. Johnny up 4-1. And he has an open shot on the one ball in the side pocket. And as I was saying earlier, Mitch, the unique thing about this format, if you make one mistake or get one or two bad breaks, you're, you're out of the tournament. I mean, it's as simple as that. Single elimination. You know, two races to five. Anything can happen. So he can't make any mistakes. And Johnny knows that as he comes to the table. And I think we're going to have a, a nice, easy shot on the two. But the position on the four is a little delicate. He wants to keep the cue ball towards the center of the table. Does not want to get snookered here on the, on the four ball. Three gone on Manalo's break. Notice how easy he hit that, Mitch. He didn't want to take any chances of getting snookered on the four. Now the tricky part here is on the five ball, it's on the side rail here. He wants an angle on the five so he can go over to the other side tail for the six ball. So let's see how he plays it. You'll see some left hand spin on the cue ball. There's your spin and there's your angle. Perfect. You got a good look there at Johnny's follow through the way he really uses his cue to move this cue ball around unafraid the thing about great players is when you're playing and you know you need to do any kind of anything with that cue ball you have to be unafraid to really follow through and finish your stroke it's a good lesson for everybody and confident you're exactly right Mitch that's a good point point. and again as Alan said the beauty of this two set format you can lose the first one win the second one and then it comes down to one rack to see who moves into the finals and a chance for $50,000 winner take all. He has an angle on the seven ball. He may bring the cue ball right into the eight or just roll the seven in nice and easy. Let's see, he played the seven ball in the side pocket. Marlon Manalo's first international challenge of champions. I know we'll see him again. Johnny's been in it a number of times. And again, neither player with a victory here. Mitch, he got absolutely perfect on this ball. He'll just bring the cue ball back down to you with a little bit of draw for the nine ball. Perfect. And if you, Johnny Archer, moving into a sudden death tie-breaking rack with five consecutive racks in the second set, you have got to be feeling pretty good. Johnny Archer doing what he needs to do. Five racks in a row over Marlon Manalo. And as we had a feeling midway through this set, we're going to sudden death. Here at the Mohegan Sun, as we thought, pressure packed as always. Marlon Manalo, Johnny Archer, one rack to see who moves into the finals. Here's our tiebreaker format. The break will be determined by this lag that you are about to see. They will play one rack, two timeouts per player, the winner of this rack moves into the final pretty simple <laughs> and yet very very complex Alan. <laughs> well this lag is huge right here and it looks like Manalo hit the ball a little too hard Johnny's going to be definitely breaking. coming off the rail and if you are Johnny Archer Johnny you want to continue what happened in the second set five racks in a row to get here so Johnny Archer's fate will be in his own hands as we move into the sudden death tie-breaking rack. But who would have thought it? A long time has gone by since this opening rack of the second set. Johnny Archer scratches Marlon Manalo up 1-0 and already up a set. And here is where everything turned around for Johnny. Nothing on the break in the second rack of the second set. Look at this roll. Johnny gets to the table. 
And how does he like it? Kiss off the one, the nine goes. That tied up the second set at one. And it was all steamrolling Johnny Archer after that. Fifth rack, five nine combination. And the end of the second set with this nine, Johnny Archer then wins the lag and he will have the break in the sudden death rack. The adrenaline has to be pumping big time through the Scorpion's body. Johnny Archer, our sudden death tie breaking rack to move into the finals. Having won the lag is now given that opportunity. Five consecutive racks to win the second set after Marlon Manalo won 5-3 in the first set and the beauty of the challenge of champions evident right now, Mitch Lawrence and Alan Hopkins, and we live for these sudden <laughs> death racks, don't we? We love them. I'll tell you what, I, I really wish he would move the cue ball somewhere else because he's, he has come up dry in that area. I mean, why not move the cue ball to like the center of the table? He breaks great from the center of the table also. Well, hopefully maybe he knows he's going to do a little something different here. Hit a different speed, put a little English on the cue ball, anything different than what's been going on. Something on that one. <laughs> he made the three ball. He actually forced it in the pocket. So <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it got kicked in. If you notice, it went to the bottom rail, and something kicked it in the corner pocket. And now that sets up this layout here with the one ball there and the cue ball here and the two ball right there. So making the one ball, getting a shot on the two is right now his concern. He's got a nice shot on the one though, Mitch. Sure does. Remember, two timeouts per rack for each player. And I guarantee you, Johnny will take all time the out. time he needs. There's one. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> well, he wants to make sure, once he gets on the two ball, he's got pretty much nice open table. The eight ball comes in play here a little bit. He just can't stop with the one. He has to do something with the cue ball. You better yeah. watch, to watch out down there. He does to bring I the cue ball. Jump the table. Like, I'm going to hit it hard. I'd hate for it to jump the table with the camera. Johnny thinking about everybody. <laughs> Very concerned about this ball. He said, I'm going to hit this hard. He's concerned mm -hmm. about it jumping. He's okay. He's not going to hit it to where it's going to come up tail, Mitch. He, he's just trying to bring the cue ball over a little bit. Basically, he's going to hit it pretty firm. He just got there. I'll tell you what, <laughs> by a whisker. <laughs> well, you can cut the tension in here with a knife, Alan. I'm serious. But <laughs> uh, well now he has a nice angle on the four. Manalo knows that he may not get to the table again. You see Johnny spin this four ball in, low left hand spin, bring the cue ball, two rails for the five ball. Hold up, hold up. Well, I'll tell you what, it came a little far. It's getting easier. <laughs> no, he can't. We'll reiterate again, both players got to this point with sudden death victories in their quarterfinals, so they know how close one way or the other. It's going to cut this in the corner. And play the cue ball, two rails for the six. One, two, perfect. I'll tell you what. This has been an impressive piece of work by Johnny Archer after being down by a set and down by a rack <laughs> after the first rack in this set. Well, sure it didn't look like it was going his way, nope. Mitch, I tell you. But, you know, I, I'd have to say now, I think he's going to get out of here. He made some nice shots to get out this rack, and, and he's getting the reward right now. Johnny and Marlon are really good friends. They have a lot of respect for each other. They were joking around before this match, even with all the pressure. And I guarantee you that Johnny knows the kind of player Marlon Manalo is. And for him to oh. win the leg and break the balls and not let him get to the table was absolutely huge. This is not done yet, by any means. But two balls left. He'll bring the cue ball. He's going to spin the cue ball out toward the center of the table, or he's just going to follow it and come up one rail. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Calls at nine. He's made a ton of these in his life. He needs this one to move on. Hello. Johnny Archer with an absolutely huge, huge final rack here in Uncasville over Marlon Manalo. Thank you. Thank you. And let us take a look once again at our Aramis super shot of the match. Rack two of the second set. Looks like it's an easy shot, but oh, the pressure on Johnny Archer to convert this. Kiss off the one and the nine into the side pocket. And indeed, the super shot for Johnny Archer. And here is a look at our updated now Mohegan Sun road to the final. Johnny Archer moves into the finals. He will meet the winner of the Torsten Homan Fang Tang Chow semifinal match. So as Johnny Archer gets ready to try to win a tournament title that has eluded him in what is otherwise a fantastic career, this was a wonderful semifinal matchup. Dominated early by Marlon Manalo, Johnny Archer coming back and taking the second set and in sudden death moving on with a chance for a $50,000 winner-take-all payoff. Thanks.